Hello and welcome to Bosch tutorial video session series. My name is Jamil Shami, currently working for Pivotal and have worked on Bosch for almost uh, two years by now. Uh, in this series of videos, we will be explaining what Bosch is, including its different components and use cases. We will also be going through different live examples as well. Uh, we have three objectives for this series. The first one is to introduce Bosch with mixture of slideshows and hands-on tutorials. So we're going to use them interchangeably. Uh, we'll be using slideshows to go through certain concepts in Bosch, and then we're going to use the hands-on tutorials to try to implement what we have, what did we go through in, this, in these slideshows. Uh, our next objective is to have short session videos. Uh, since Bosch contains many components, to make it easy for future reference and notifications, we will be splitting these sessions into short, visio short videos uh, as much as we can to make it easy for both of us to pick and choose which video we want to watch without getting overwhelmed with too many details at once. Uh, and the third objective is to have fun. Uh, Bosch does several things very well and when mastering its concepts, you can take advantage of its capabilities to build your own system the way you want. So hopefully we can reach this objective. Uh, so maybe we'll start with some general info about Bosch. Um, it's an open source project under the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Uh, you can view all of its source code on GitHub. It's open source and you can uh, follow all its development lifecycle as well and you can visit its website to, f to see all the links necessary uh, to go to GitHub or the um, Pivotal Tracker, which is the, uh, life, which is the development cycle uh, tracking system that Bosch uses. Um, also, we're going to talk about the Bosch contributors. Uh, there are multiple companies that regularly contribute to Bosch. Um, multiple components of Bosch, uh, not necessarily the same one. Um, these contributors, including uh, Pivotal, which, which is the main contributor. Uh, we have SAP, VMware, Microsoft, IBM, Google, and many other individual contributors as well. Um, we should also note that Bosch is almost eight years old by now, originally seeing light at VMware. So what is Bosch? Let's say we have the objective of running an application server, for example, Apache Tomcat, alongside a Postgres database. We want to run each of these two components on, sev on separate VMs on Amazon's EC2. That's where Bosch comes into place. First, we package our software. In this case, it's going to be Tomcat and Postgres in a tarball following a specific format. We're going to visit that format later in our video sessions. Then we will tell Bosch, please take the tarball, create me two virtual machines and run my software on them. And by the way, please keep them running. And if one VM goes down, please replace it quickly and reinstall the software on it and run it again. That's it. This is Bosch. But in theory, what is Bosch? Till now it's just just talking a bit more about the concept. The sec second step to think about Bosch is as a black, black box VM. I always like to think about it first as a black box VM that somebody created for us. We're going to create it ourselves later, but for now, let's imagine somebody created that Bosch for us. This black box VM has processes running on it that we interact with using a command line tool from our, let's say, laptop. We call that tool the Bosch CLI command line interface. This communication happens over an HTTP API, and as an operator of Bosch, you'll be using the CLI to interact with the Bosch process running on the VM. So Bosch is a black box VM, somebody created for us, and with some process on it that we interact with using a command line interface. In our previous example, we mentioned that we want to create the VMs on Amazon EC2. It's important to note that one of Bosch's important capabilities is the ability to run your software not only on Amazon EC2, but also on VMware vSphere 
Google C GCP, OpenStack, Microsoft Azure, IBM SoftLayer with no required changes to your package software. This is a powerful concept with Bosch that we're going to visit later in this series. As a summary, let's try to think again about Bosch as a program running on some VM that will give it a compressed tarball of our software and tell it to run it on X number of VMs, be it one VM or hundreds of VMs. In the next session, we'll be talking about how to package our software in that tarball so that Bosch understands how to deal with it. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video session.